Well, 30 years ago, I was driving through the Mount Everest National Nature Preserve in the Tibet Autonomous Region of China. It's called Chomolongma National Nature Preserve, because Chomolongma is the Tibetan word for Mount Everest. And out the window, we saw this huge field of rape plants. Brilliant. We stopped the vehicle. I said, this is great. We jumped out and we went and talked to the person. We looked at the plants. And yes, they were rape plants growing from rape seeds at this elevation of 15,000 feet, roughly 4,000 meters. And I immediately connected in my mind, isn't this interesting? Because these rape seeds are capturing the sunlight. So there's a lot of energy that these rape plants are capturing. And that energy is being condensed into the rape seeds. Well, two years ago, I drove back through that same area and I've been going through. It's the main highway between Lhasa and Tibet. Kathmandu in Nepal, and those fields that had rape plants growing for their seeds, those fields are now growing barley and growing potatoes. In other words, fields that were once capturing the sunlight so the sunlight could be squeezed out of these seeds, those same fields are now growing food for people to eat. so that the nutrition, the food security has all gone up because those food fields are now producing food. And they don't need the rape seeds anymore because they're getting their electricity from photovoltaic panels. A photovoltaic panel has lots of tiny pixels on it. And each tiny pixel on the big panel is capturing sunlight, condensing that, into the pixel, the electrons go into a battery and it's stored in the battery and people at night turn on this light switch and their homes have light. That's more light, easier than having to grow the rape plant, squeeze the seeds, and then burn a wick in the oil. But it's actually the same process where sunlight is being condensed into the rape seed or where sunlight is being condensed into a photovoltaic panel and then it goes on to give illumination at night. Well, because the quality of life has improved for the people who live in the middle of a nature preserve, they've moved from being the second poorest county in all of China, Dingri County in the Tibet Autonomous Region of China, They've moved from being the second poorest into being middle class in Chinese society. And of course, middle class today in China is a lot better off than middle class it was 30 years ago. So the people are better off. They're better off economically. They have food security. They have better health. They have advanced. But what's interesting and important is that those fields and those villagers that once were poor are very similar to these experiences we have here at the headquarters of Future Generations, where we're in the middle of a nature preserve. It's called the Monongahela National Forest. And half the land is being used for traditional agriculture. And half the land, as you can see, is being protected for the watershed, for the biodiversity, for the trees. So that the people's land here is being used to improve the quality of their life and to protect the environment for the whole planet. And the same thing is happening at the highest place on Earth, Mount Everest. For the highest need that we as people have, which is to develop new ways of sustainable living that are partnering people and nature, that are partnering with our governments, whatever they might be. 
that are giving us a future that has a rising quality of life. Now in the Tibetan area of China, that where this all began, we also began a new type of conservation programs to, to save one of the most endangered animals then on the planet, the snow leopard. The people were killing snow leopards to sell their pelts. Today they're not. They've learned how to live with the snow leopard and their sheep that are run on, the, on their fields and to protect their sheep through fencing and corrals and a whole approach. And the partnership approach that began in the Chomolongma National Nature Preserve in Tibet in Dingri County, where the rapeseed picture that I just showed you was taken. That partnership approach extended across the, the international border into the Sagarmatha National Park on the Nepal side of Everest and its adjacent Makalu Barun National Park that future generations personnel partnered with the government and the communities in creating. It extended into five different nature preserves in Nepal. It went north into Ladakh in India. It went north beyond Ladakh, that community-based approach into Kazakhstan and Mongolia. So now the snow leopard is no longer endangered, it's considered vulnerable. We as people are vulnerable today. Our way of living is vulnerable. If we don't do something now, we as people and our way of living is actually endangered. So let us take this lesson that came from the tiny, tiny grape seed, the mustard seed. All of our religions have celebrated the importance of the tiny mustard seed. It is at the center of our, the growth of civilization for thousands of years. It is our human energy now that we can learn to reprogram, to get new behaviors, to partner with nature, to address the highest need that the humans and that all species have. So from this mustard field at the middle of the Chomongoma Nature Preserve and the lessons that we've learned about partnering that are being extended through future generations educational programs, we have some hope to move not from vulnerability towards being endangered, but to move from vulnerability towards sustainability and inclusion of all. Thank you very much.